using your logo to give away the main premise of your multiverse before we've seen any of it. Also, Comcast, putting Tesla in a Kia. Sleeping upright in your car instead of reclining one of the front seats or lying in the back of your Kia Soul. The only possible reason Ryan's car is parked this far from the dorms is that the writers need him to walk past several oddly specific things so we can more easily believe that he is in a time loop. Well, it may be possible that he found some workaround so he wouldn't have to pay for a parking pass, but if that were the case, this street would be packed with the cars of other students doing the same f***ing thing. Fair any change? I refuse to believe that jump scares can be used to elicit goodwill and discount Doc Brown over here should know that. This guy skateboarding with these coffees is only the first f*** you this movie says to physics. Feeling the need to put nose picking in your movie. Shut up! This guy's response to the tromboning is right. If you can't blow it alone in your own room, then you probably shouldn't be playing with it. Wait, what? Not the exact wording, but this is still a you better come take a look at this cliche. 0.7 millinewtons of energy? <laughs> that's, a, that's like huge. When? Uh, yesterday, 12.01 AM. We're about to find out that this machine has been causing rolling blackouts around campus. It's gotta be next to impossible that Ryan didn't learn about all this until now. Also, millinewtons are used to measure force, not energy. So this statement is at best incomplete and at worst makes no f***ing sense. Also, also, the shot of this screen is an orgy of evidence to prove that science is going on, or possibly an album is being mastered. So the dean just left and there's no way somebody opened the door and snapped a picture of Ryan on the couch this fast without us hearing the door opening and closing. There are no windows in this lab and the doors themselves have an opaque covering where windows normally would be. Also, what the f time is this on Ryan's phone? It says 9.30 and then there's an eight just before the AM. Confusing matters further is when the killer sends the next picture and it's suddenly 8.58 p-f***ing-m. And the phone suddenly shows a date of May 18th when the previous picture didn't even bother providing one. By the way, funny how the bustling science building that we saw in the establishing shot is suddenly abandoned now that a murder is going to take place. First off, who the f*** creeps up on someone like this in a dark room holding a f***ing churro? Wouldn't this guy just say, hey Ryan, got a churro for you, buddy? Second off, and more importantly, how the f*** did Life of Pi know that Ryan was even in the chem lab? Unless he specifically saw Ryan go in there, why is he wandering into the dark-ass chem lab looking for him? Ow! Stoning the homeless. Okay, recap. The movie needed this if they wanted anyone who hasn't seen the first film to not be completely lost, but this previously on makes it feel like I'm starting season two of pretty much any show on the CW. It's like Inception. It's a dream. Than a dream. Well, if you actually saw Inception, you would know that lying down quietly isn't going to wake you up. You need someone to push you in the shower or some sh There, see, you're not dreaming. Why'd you hit my penis? To let you know that you are not dreaming. You are not very observant for a major in sciencing things. Show me where you died. They then go directly to the abandoned chem lab to find the killer, as if the killer would just hang out there without sending the creepy photos first. Also, seriously, turn on the lights, assholes. Where'd you get that mask? It was just laying in the hallway. Somebody must have dropped it. Oh, come on. If you're the killer, why would you just drop your mask? Unless it's going to be used as a fake scare later. That's it. I've had it. Why the f*** did this guy just pop in like he was expecting them in this room when everyone being in this room is very much a random occurrence? Does he just walk into every room like this? And it's all because of your little science project. Wait. What science project? Movie then immediately cuts to some exposition about the project, as if the Prince of Passel was just done with the yelling he loves so much. You ditched our house meeting? It was canceled. When? Um, after I kicked my murdering roommate out of a window. Ever since the revelation that the machine caused the time loop from the first movie, now I've got to ask, do you mean to tell me the tree killed her roommate in self-defense and everything went back to normal on campus the very next day? How would anyone even sleep at the sorority house after something like that happened? Hi, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Samara. Hey, Samosa. My head's the middle one. Thinking your head is a boob. A super offensive and apparently racist boob. We just need to find the safest possible place and wait it out there. Why the f*** would you go here instead of just locking yourself inside your dorm room for the night? Plus, this college basketball game isn't going to last until midnight or whatever the f*** time you need to be safe. So what the hell is this supposed to do? They act like they didn't see a million people dressed up as babies before they walked into the arena. There's safety in numbers. I'm like hiding in plain sight. Using more like as if it's a counter argument when the statement is technically in agreement. Is her father saying he's proud of her for kicking her roommate out of a window in the last movie? Because that is the only context we have for this text message. Why is it suddenly December 11th? Tree's birthday was September 18th in the previous movie and this is supposed to be the next day. And don't even get me started on Ryan's nonsense phone that showed May 18th earlier.
Down by 16 in the second half. Looks like the Bayfield babies got lucky this alarm went off. It's too bad no one on their team was stuck in a time loop where they had to get good at basketball. I'd also like to point out that when your team is called the babies, you have absolutely no way of making theme banners that don't own yourself. Nap time for Thurman is like the preemptive self-diss Eminem does in 8 Mile. Except you're the only person on stage and the crowd left 30 minutes ago. Also, baby gang. <laughs> During this alarm that is not a drill, there are way too many people clapping and being excited for a game where the babies were losing 50 to 34. The killer is constantly getting into places without making any noise and apparently knows exactly where Ryan is going at all times. And yes, this is a parallel universe Ryan, but that doesn't give him any advantage more than a stranger. Also, the killer came here for the stabbing, but went with grabbing because the plot wasn't ready for stabbing. <laughs> How the f did Tree and Carter know where Ryan went? They lost each other and then Ryan went on a nearly random round to get down here. What the? Nice little cut to the science lab, but how the f did they drag someone who looked exactly like Ryan unconscious through the campus and into the science lab late at night? And are these buildings ever locked after hours or what? We're all in serious danger. The longer we exist in the same dimension, the worse things will get. It's a butterfly effect. You have to kill him. Parallel Ryan thinks this is a satisfactory explanation for killing someone. Me? He's going to create bigger problems if you do not stop him. They don't kill him and he does a thing, but it only ends up booting Tree over into a parallel universe. Sure, it's a problem, but it's not the mind-bending time nonsense that the movie just primed us for. Why is this machine still here? The Dean said he was calling security and it was going to be taken out of the room by 6 p.m. Sure, this is technically a different day and the Dean didn't get a chance to tell Ryan he was calling security this time, but there's no way he changed his mind just because the movie cut away before he got a chance. What did I tell you about turning that thing on? Well, nothing, honestly. The machine was supposed to be gone. And do you live in this science building? How the f*** did you get here so fast? Nearly 50 seconds of slow motion falling crashing. Also, we won't dare play the song, but the beautifully operatic piece Flower Duet is playing to juxtapose the chaos of whatever the f*** just happened. And it all feels like something we've seen before. Uh... Who's this crazy white girl? Not sure why I had to mention her race, but I guess this is a lazy way to get a laugh and getting people to like a movie is already so hard as it is. It's a nightmare! This sucks! It sucks the biggest mega balls in the history of shitty ball suckery! Well, sequels are rarely better than the original. I think the movie is being a bit harsh on itself. So we're about to find out that Tree is in a new dimension where things are different. So different that Carter is now dating Danielle and Lori isn't a psycho killer anymore and f Tree's mom is alive! Yet the walk through campus is the exact same as it was in the first movie. And I believe that's f***ing impossible given that many differences, and f*** you. Movie's getting one sin because no one on the production team told this guy that he is supposed to be tying his shoe instead of being a creepy old dude creeping around campus and hiding behind bushes on all fours. It's also getting two more because figuring this out required me to go back to the previous movie where I found out that this guy changes his physical form during the transition from this shot to this shot, introducing shapeshifters into what is already a convoluted mess. With Marty McFly? Doc? The DeLorean? Sorry. Universal Pictures presents yet another movie where men reference Universal's Back to the Future and women somehow have never heard of it, much like Universal's Knocked Up. Does this mean that there are two of me? I highly doubt it. It's almost impossible to create a holographic universe. You're probably stuck in a quantum cyclic dimension. When the f*** did this guy become the expert on anything? One of my biggest issues with this movie is that no matter how many science terms come out of Ryan's mouth, he never really seems to know what is going on, and it makes it almost impossible to accept his many theories of nothing. Also, why doesn't Tree explain the whole situation earlier, where there were two versions of Ryan, and tell him that he's an idiot that has no clue about what is and is impossible? I don't know who started this annoying and wasteful trend of explaining reality by using a pen to punch a hole in some paper, but I'm blaming Sam Neill in Event Horizon. So, how different are we talking here? Well, it depends. Wood was about to explain how different this dimension could be, but doesn't want to bring up the questions that would involve answering. So it introduces the new Danielle to interrupt that thought process. This is a dimension that is so different, almost nothing should be the same. O Fortuna is playing over this kissing scene, and I can't help but be reminded of Jackass the movie, and the reimagining of Hamlet that I filmed for my senior English project, which, due to production issues, budget overruns, and rewrites, ended with a very unexplained lightsaber battle. Tree's mom just stands here for the longest time, as if she knows what a dramatic moment this is for the tree that lost her mom. I changed my mind. This movie came after Cloverfield Paradox and before Doctor Strange 2, but I think we can officially call this a protagonist wants to steal the parallel universe where their family is alive cliche. I slept in Ryan's bed last night. So why take me home? Because you were, you were wasted. So taking her to your dorm room is a better option than simply taking her back to the sorority house? That's so weird. Looking through a stranger's private videos just because you are them. Here's where we hit the It's a Wonderful Life, or if you're Cretan, Shrek Forever After portion of the movie, where the protagonist has been shown that the world they live in is different, but in moments like these, act like the events from their world will be the same in the parallel universe. Absolutely no thought goes into this trip to the hospital, but who cares? She'll come back to life in the morning so she can afford to be reckless. He's going to escape! Call the police! 
Boys! Even if this was the same universe, Tree acting like she can pronoun game her way into winning is definitely worth a sit. Also, how is this the first person Tree has run into since seeing the news report about the prisoner? And why not call the police on your way to the hospital? This stabbing doesn't even make any sense. When we finally do get all the murder reveals later, we'll find out that none of them even know who Tree is. There is no reason for them to try and kill her or this cop right now. The power. It is way too easy to cut this hospital's power. It's like they don't even care about the people on life support. This must be one of the floors under construction. Yeah, I might be, judging by all the construction. This is all we hear when Lori gets stabbed. The killers in these movies found a way to send their sound waves into another dimension. And then when she does get stabbed, it's like she totally expected this shit and didn't scream or grunt or anything. It's like she's practiced getting stabbed and keeping a poker face throughout. You, meet me in your lab in an hour. Huh? Got to get out of these disgusting clothes. Tree acts like this is the 400th time she's done this with Ryan and expects him to show up to the lab in an hour, which he does because the movie says so. This is gonna be a trial and error situation. We have to rule out every variable in order to narrow down the correct algorithm that will close the loop. Ryan is sure that finding the right variables will make the machine work when he hasn't even ruled out whatchamacallits. Okay, you said everything resets but your memory, right? Yeah. All right, well then you're just gonna have to be a living record. You mean memorize everything. That's genius. This revelation about using your memory is not a revelation as much as it is the only option. So I'm not sure why they're acting like Carter just invented interdimensional travel. Math, coding, eating paper, science? I do not understand why her hair would be the same as it was when she died, when everything except her memory resets every day. If she can carry her poofy hair with her into the next day, she should be able to tattoo the equations on her body that she needs to memorize as if she were in prison break. Also, a movie could spend a minute explaining how electrocution hair side effects happen, but jumping into a wood chipper side effects don't. A grocery store that puts pet food and laundry detergent or bleach in the same aisle. Deciding you need to be this grossly creative when resetting your Groundhog Day. This asshole is so distracted by Tree in a bikini, he forgets to stop her from getting anywhere near jumping off this plane. And yes, I agree, I would be momentarily stunned, but it would not prevent me from stopping this shit. Sure, sure, she fell exactly where she needed to fall, so it would be right in front of Carter and Danielle. With this kind of calculation, Tree should have figured out how to close the time loop by now. Also, the movie is just giving the middle finger to any of the logic it's set up regarding the effects these repeated reincarnations have on the body. I'm not sure why this is being portrayed as fun, and it's sinful as hell. She's fallen so many times to her death that I've heard millions of Andrew Garfields cry out in terror and were suddenly silenced. What the hell are you always looking for under that desk? My mouth card. I grind like two tonight. Uh huh. So why are you looking for it in the morning? I don't know if you remember my name or not. You were uh, you were pretty wasted last night. But I'm from Carter. Why would she not know your name when you expected her to know that you were dating Danielle? Uh, apparently you guys are dating. Wait, I thought I thought you knew that. I mean, you guys live in the same house. Listen, I love the swing this movie is taking with all the time loop multiversal hijinks, and the continuity is surprisingly better than I expected. But these little inconsistencies in dialogue subvert all that hard work. Jesus. Jump shadowing your murder scare nonsense. Who? Lori, he's gonna kill her. You need to stop her from going down to the OR. I'm sorry, I don't know who you're talking about. Is Dr. Butler so entwined in his affair with Lori that he can't even admit that she's a nurse that works at this hospital? Go! Go! Tree knows the murder plot, so it makes no sense that Dr. Butler runs off now instead of smothering Tree right here. It's a misdirection for the audience so they can stretch out this story, but it doesn't align at all with his motivations later in the movie. So wait, since this blood trail leads to Lori's body, did she get stabbed out here and then dragged into the room? This is an extremely convenient blood trail for the protagonist to find at this moment. Are these supposed to be oxygen tanks? I'm pretty sure those would be labeled oxygen and not flammable gas, unless I'm just not aware of all those times a hospital room needs just any random flammable gas. Then multiply the Euclidean vector by the square root of pi to the 17th power, which then gives us an axum point of point zero zero four then gives us a linear plane vector of 8.2. Tree is saying math words that may or may not be actual maths, proving our ignorance on the subject and damning me to repeat college algebra for the fourth time. If these are all the failed algorithms, then there's only one possibility left. I know they worked hard on these algorithms, but this still feels way too easy for there to be only one left. I really shouldn't even be questioning this shit, honestly. It's not like I know how any of this is supposed to work, but let's just say that it's a lot of bullshit that in the finite amount of algorithms they found, the one that worked only after eliminating all the others. Dude, did you open spam porn again on the computer? Spam porn? I have to manually re-enter all this code. Hey, how long? Six, seven hours. The movie sure does love amping up the excitement just so it can throw water on the fire. Okay, well what about the killer? 
I mean, you said people are gonna die tonight. If you close the loop and we don't help, then they're dead for good, aren't they? My question is, since the killer isn't looking for Tree in this universe, what would happen if she just lived her life into the next day? This hasn't proved to be a true Groundhog Day experience because it requires her death to reset the day. She hasn't tried staying up past midnight or anything, so couldn't she just stay here without the loop closing? If the movie is saying that for some reason, then why did she even need to kill herself all those times? You have no idea how hard this is for me. I don't want to have to choose between you and my mom, but I have to. What do you mean, choose? Carter, we're together in the other dimension. You should not be treating these things as if they are anywhere close to being the same. Carter is in the college relationship with Danielle. Those things end all the time. You very much still have a chance with this guy. Your mother, being either alive or dead, on the other hand, is a much more absolute thing. Also, Tree's being a dick to the version of herself that woke up this morning to find out that her mom's dead. Maybe giving her her life back is more important than whether or not you and Carter get to make out in his dorm room. Also, also, we never get any idea of what the other version of her is up to in the other dimension. What if that version of her is also working on the problem but chooses the opposite choice of this tree? What happens then? Do the two opposing space-time orbs cancel each other out, or does it fracture reality even further? I feel like there's a cartoon that addressed this topic better in 20 minutes than this movie is doing with 90. I did it over and over and over again until I fell in love with you. Doing it over and over and over had the opposite effect on my college girlfriend. Look. I don't want to freak you guys out, but I need to get as far away from campus as possible. After hearing this, they don't freak out. Hey girls, it's getting kind of late. What do you say we find some place, turn in for the night? The movie makes it seem like they have been driving for hours, but they are just passing the Bayfield Electrical Substation. How f***ing big is Bayfield? These aren't visiting hours, yet Carter was able to make it to the elevator of a big hospital without security asking him why the hell he's there or where he's going. And this is a hospital that is supposedly housing a dangerous serial killer. Furthermore, what are the chances he walked off the elevator just as Lori was wheeling someone into their room? Like, pretty much none, right? But how did you know that he was the one? Skip. Crazy White Girl is what Ryan called Tree on the day she woke up and realized she was living the same day from the first movie all over again and flew off the handle. The only thing she's done today is wake up and throw a bunch of complicated quantum physics in his face. So why did he still end up on Crazy White Girl when it should be Super Intelligent White Girl or simply f***ing Tree, considering the respect she's earned? Putting your face this close to something that can f*** with space time. I don't even have to tell you that this ticking clock is a bunch of bullshit. Do I? I mean, it takes three times as long for this clock to go down than it actually has. The worst offender is when it shows you two before cutting away and showing four more seconds of tree before cutting back and showing you two again. What kills me about these types of scenes is that they could be honest about it and still get the last second miracle, but they chose not to for some reason. Finally rolls in. The movie suggests that after Tree woke up, convinced everyone about the multiverse, went to Ryan's lab, recited the algorithm from memory, and came back to the Kappa house, that it equals nearly the exact amount of time it took her to get back to the house on all the other days she made this trip. I'm the woman I am because I had you. Hallmark Channel Anigans. Happy birthday to you. How the f did Dad know that Tree was done with her girl talk with Mom? F your fing birthday cake, Dad. Sure, toss quantum entanglement up on the board for good measure. What did I tell you about turning that thing on? In this world, nothing. The entire time Tree has been in this dimension, the Dean has never shown up. It has never been an issue until now. Also, this TV episode disguised as a movie would have been like 45 minutes if they didn't keep finding ways to interrupt the turning on of this machine, and I would have been okay with that. Where are you taking her? My office, where it will remain under lock and key. Your office is the only place on the entire campus where you can lock this up? Why not kick them out and lock this room? Are you the dean of this university, or are you the principal of a high school? Gah! I will just reset the day and try again. No. I keep getting weaker every time I come back. I don't know how many chances I have left. You still haven't tried waiting it out overnight to see what happens or even discussed it. But honestly, get the f out of here with your I don't know how many chances I have left bullshit. You haven't expressed any real concerns about it until now. And this is at a crucial point where a simple reset is easier than the Mission Impossible bullshit you're gonna try. Unless we steal it back. Now it's a heist movie all of a sudden. So we need to get the keys to his office, sneak over to admissions, break into the dean's office. You built a quantum tunnel or some shit, but you can't break into the dean's office without a key? As much as I love the Danielle character, I'd have been more excited about Tree risking her life one more time, surviving, and suffering one big complication that makes going back home difficult over all this. The following sequence tries to be a hilarious farce, but nothing truly clever happens. And while we can hate this dean all we want, he was right to take the machine that was causing rolling blackouts. Just because he's an asshole doesn't mean he can't be a right asshole. That sounded weird. Let me explain. You see... Sorry, bad timing. This guy continues peeing for 12 more seconds, and I'm going to give a sin for each second. Okay, now slowly turn around. Couldn't we have just cut to tree with a gun in this guy's head coming out of the bathroom and just moved on with this already? There's a killer on the loose here. Go get help. I won't tell you straight up that it's the serial killer John Toombs. I'll just leave that up for interpretation so there will be a misunderstanding. 
Why does a serial killer like this not have fucking guards anywhere near him or around the door? Yeah, sure, that one dude went off to pee, and that's super hilarious and shit, but how the f*** does that one guy constitute the entire security team? Also, the sheer absurdity and height at which this man is thrown by those three gunshots. His wife found out about your affair, so he stole a page from your old playbook. Treep, this Lori doesn't know what the f*** playbook you're talking about. Also, two different killers in parallel universes thought that freeing a serial killer in a hospital was going to be this f***ing easy. He said tombs free, knowing that everyone would think that he killed you. In the first Happy Death Day, wearing a baby mascot costume made sense. Lori set tombs free so that any murders that happened nearby could be pinned on him, and she used that disguise to go anywhere on campus to kill Tree. But in this movie, the killers want to murder Lori at the hospital, and people dressed up in baby outfits isn't necessary. Once tombs is free, he's just gonna kill Lori and you can blame it on him. And even if he doesn't kill Lori, you can kill yourself and still blame it on him. Sarcastic clapping this openly in a public place while holding a knife and wearing a costume. You really think I was gonna let a little whore like that ruin my life? Okay, so the wife is in on it too, but god damn it, there's no reason for her to be here. Seriously, why is she here? What purpose does she serve except to be a surprise killer that isn't needed for this story? And couldn't she have just told her husband to break it off since she knows about the affair and he knows that she knows? Isn't that easier than killing her? None of this makes sense! It would have made infinitely more sense if the wife was acting alone! The f also, what do they do if John Toombs doesn't get admitted to this hospital? Do they still come up with this murder plot? Would they try to pin it on, I don't know, the cast of Jesus Christ Superstar? Furthermore, why does she have a gun? Isn't the idea that John Toombs was going to stab Lori and that was the end of it? The f*** she have a gun for except to get the upper hand on Tree, who she did not know would be here tonight? This is all happening in the middle of a hospital after the security guard went to go get help, by the way. Would you like to do the honors? F*** you. Also, this hospital is now conveniently missing all of its staff and all of its cameras. <laughs> I want a divorce. And you could have just done that, right? Wait! I have something I need to tell you. What? You're screwed. You might think I'm sending this for him waiting, but I'm more insulted because she doesn't say, your shoe was untied. Suddenly everyone who works at the hospital came back from their smoke and sex break all at the same time. The police have not arrested Tree yet, and no one but Carter is helping Lori. Not any of the hospital staff or these cops that run by, because they're all extras. I'm sorry, but we need to move her. Well, yeah, it's time for this nurse to be sorry instead of moving her. I hope you realize I'm only going back for one reason. Traveling through time and space for a college relationship. Wearing reflective clothing even though you are picking up trash in the quad and nowhere near an active roadway. Yes, it does. It acted like a slingshot. When she jumped back into this dimension, the vacuum created by the centripetal force closed the loop. Writers include a mid credit scene so they could continue not explaining how any of this worked. I think I have the perfect recruit. Movie sets up a part three with the awesome Danielle that we may never see. Those two jumps has just reached the end of their Horga life cycle, and you need to understand it as a great joy for them. But, but there was no pig! <laughs> I, I did not pick! There was no pig! Sorry. With Marty McFly? Doc? The DeLorean? I don't know who Doc Brown is. What, what are you talking about? Just so we're totally clear. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. F*** you, Lance, answer! I know you're out there. I can feel you now. Take care of yourself. I guess that's what you're best at, isn't it? And I just hope I can become half of the woman that you are one day. Are you kidding? You're not good enough. So, in this other dimension, do we... do it? Come on, I want you to say more. Just one time, passport. You have such a beautiful voice.